Calgary, Alberta has its fair share of intriguing houses. Take a look at these homes here, for example. Each one of them is unique and interesting in their own way. But for me, Calgary's most interesting home ever was an unfinished sandstone castle on the banks of the Elbow River. This is the story of Lindsay's Folly, a Calgary pioneer's dream home that now sits in ruins. Neville James Lindsay, Calgary's first resident physician and surgeon, originally from Ontario, arrived in the city from Winnipeg in August 1883. One year later, he served on Calgary's first city council until 1886, the same year he became the government-appointed doctor for local Aboriginal reserves. After leaving the city for the Yukon in 1898, he returned a wealthy man, having made a fortune through mining ventures. The doctor invested his money in real estate and business ventures, and in 1901, purchased a good chunk of land in and around the area of the city known today as Earlton. In 1911, after his subdividing and selling the land, he sold the last 20 acres of Lindsay Estate to the Canadian Northern Railway for $100,000. He also purchased land along the Elbow River, which we will get back to shortly. The doctor lived with his wife Florence and their children at 503 Center Street Southwest, also known as Kimberly Place. The site is now the home of Suncor Energy Center East Tower. Another important location in the Lindsay's Folly story is here, just south of 503 at the corner of Center Street and 7th Avenue Southeast. This is the former location of the original Knox Presbyterian Church, property Lindsay bought in 1910 when the church relocated. Okay, now we can get into the good stuff, the mansion slash castle known as Lindsay's Folly, aka Lindsay's Castle, a.k.a. Dead Man's Castle, which is of course my favorite name for the property. In 1913, Neville Lindsay began building his nobly proportioned residence on the banks of the Elbow River, just below the present-day community of Park Hill. Reusing the sandstone from the demolished Knox Church and red brick, Lindsay set out to build a 12 to 14 room residence with a main floor that measured 4,000 square feet. It was to be built for $35,000. However, soon after the construction started, it ended. With the foundations in place, several of the first story walls complete, and a massive sandstone porch finished, Lindsay abandoned his dream home. After 1913, Calgary's real estate boom went bust, and with World War I starting in 1914, Lindsay was unable to renew the large loan he was using to finance his real estate ventures. It was also rumored that the land Lindsay was building on was unable to support the massive house, and that's why he ceased construction. Regardless, property taxes eventually ate up all of Lindsay's savings, and his properties eventually became property of the city because of tax-related issues. This was the case for the Elbow River property, which was taken from Florence Lindsay in 1936. 11 years after Dr. Neville James Lindsay passed away. Florence passed away a year later and the site's structures eventually collapsed and the sandstone was raided by locals. This 1940s photo helps demonstrate how massive this place was. Calgary pioneer Dr. Neville James Lindsay was laid to rest in the Union Cemetery in 1925, not too far from the land he used to own in Earlton. Although he never completed his dream home, its ruins have provided joy, wonder, and intrigue to all those who have encountered them over the past decades, and hopefully will continue to do so for years to come. <laughs>